the show, everybody. It is the Robbie G Podcast coming at you from my garage in Illinois. Having a great time here. Um, it's going to be a wonderful weekend. Football is officially back. We got footy, footy, football back. And then, of course, WWE SummerSlams this weekend. If you're in the Chicagoland area, Lollapalooza is this weekend starting today. It is a huge huge weekend to kick off August. That's right. We are on August 1st. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. And here's some celebrities that share a birthday with you. Uh, Actor Jason Momoa turns 45. Coolio, uh, happy heavenly birthday to him. He would have had a birthday today. Uh, Granny Smith, an Instagram star, turns 98 years old. Uh, Let's see. Just going through this list, seeing if there's anybody good that everybody would know. Movie actor Luke Esner is 28. Uh, I don't see anybody. Usually I write them down, but it's been a week and I didn't get to do that. Jerry Garcia, the man, the Grateful Dead man, would have been uh, celebrating a birthday today. Uh, Joe Elliott, singer, rock singer, 65. Scotty Barnes, basketball player, 23. And that looks like that is it. Uh, Tiffany Young, a pop singer, is 35. Uh, So happy birthday to all those celebrities that are uh, celebrating a birthday today. And happy birthday to all of you out there too. Uh, Let's get this thing kicked off. Today is the official kickoff of the NFL season. And that means that we have the Hall of Fame game. And it's big for the Chicago Bears. Um, It's big. Pretty much for um, football in general. Steve Mongo McMichael officially will be enshrined into the Hall of Fame on Saturday night. And what a career this man has had. I mean, Steve McMichael, most people know him as a bear. Some people know him as a former wrestler in WCW. Other people obviously know him as the man who is um, pretty much, I believe, like near death with ALS. Uh, so, I mean, whether you know him for that, football or wrestling, the man has done it all. He deserves to be in that spot. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who's going to be in the Hall of Fame this weekend, who's getting enshrined, and then we'll talk a little bit about the actual Hall of Fame football game that's going on tonight with the Bears and the Texans. And here we go. So here is the list of men who will make it to Canton, Ohio this weekend on August 3rd, Saturday night. And will be enshrined in the NFL Hall of Fame. Uh, Dwight Freeney, defensive end. He played for the Indianapolis Colts from 2002 to 2012. San Diego Chargers 2013-2014. Arizona Cardinals 2015. Atlanta Falcons 2016. Detroit Lions 2017. And Seattle Seahawks 2017. Uh, Definitely, wow, he was... All over the place. He played for a lot of teams. Uh, Why he was elected Freeney. An all-decade selection for the 2000s finished 18th in career sacks. And officially became a statistic in 1982 with 125.5. Freeney had seven seasons with at least 10 sacks. And he forced at least four fumbles in eight seasons. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, let's see, Randy Garnisher, linebacker for the Denver Broncos, 1974 to 1983. Why he was elected, he was credited with a franchise record 2,049 tackles. May have been the most decorated player in the Hall Seniors pool. He never missed a game and was named to seven Pro Bowls. That's crazy. That's awesome. Hold on one second, I gotta do something here. That's amazing, though. Um... It's amazing to go even eight years, ten years without missing a game because you got to think about it. With injuries that go around a lot, that is crazy. Uh, quotables, the ble- the best player I ever coached, former Broncos defensive coordinator Joe Collier. Uh, Devin Hester, my boy Devin Hester, I love this guy. Uh, wide receiver and kick returner and punt returner. Played for the Chicago Bears 2006 to 2013. Atlanta Falcons 2014 15. 
Baltimore Ravens 2016 and the Seattle Seahawks in 2016. Why he was elected, if you don't know by now, then you don't watch football. Uh, many personal executives, former opponents, and teammates consider him the best returner to have ever played. Before kickoffs were made from the 35-yard line, teams often elected to send kickoffs out of bounds, giving the Bears the ball at the 40-yard line, rather than put it in Hester's hands. He once returned a kickoff for a touchdown when Chicago had the hands team on the field instead of the usual allotment of blockers. He's the only player in history with at least five special team touchdowns in a season, and he did it twice. He's also the only kick returner to ever lead the league in both kickoff and punt returns twice. At age 34 in the final game of his career, he had a career high in postseason kickoff returns, 194. Everybody knows his big signature moment was when he kicked off the Super Bowl in 2006 versus the Colts with a kick return for a touchdown. They never kicked right to him again after that for the rest of the game. Um, quotable, the guy is the greatest runner uh, returner ever. And that is coming from Deion Sanders when Hester was named to the NFL's 100th anniversary team. Uh, another reason that the Bears are playing the Texans in the uh, Hall of Fame game Andre Johnson, wide receiver from the Houston Texans, 2003 to 2014. He also played for the Indianapolis Colts, 2015, and the Tennessee Titans in 2016. While he was elected, Johnson led the league twice, both in receptions and receiving yards. He had 21 games in his career with at least 10 receptions and at least 100 yards receiving. Most of the time, and his eight career games with at least 10 receptions, 150 yards receiving, and one touchdown are most of all time. Johnson and Hall of Famer Jerry Rice are the only players to have multiple 1,400-yard seasons after the age of 30. Uh, quotables, this came from Hall of Fame cornerback Champ Bailey. When you line up and the guy is bigger than you like he is, and he might be as fast or a little faster than a lot of the guys like he is, that's a problem. And the ball hasn't even been snapped yet. That is amazing. Here we go. Steve Mongo McMichael. Defensive tackle. He played for the New England Patriots in 1980 before coming to the Chicago Bears 1981 to 1993. And he ended his career with the Green Bay Packers. So he's actually played for three historic franchises. He started in New England for a year, then came to Chicago for the majority of his career and then went to Green Bay for his last year. Uh, why he was elected, McMichael had seven seasons with at least eight sacks. There are just four defensive tackles since sacks became an official statistic to have more seasons with at least eight. Hall of Famers John Randall, Alan Page, and Alex Karras, along with the current Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald. In the 11-year span, McMichael was a starting defensive tackle for the Bears. Chicago allowed the second-fewest rushing yards and led the league in sacks. He had 53 sacks in a six-season span, 1983 to 1988, when the Bears' defense was at its peak. He was named first-team All-Pro twice, second-team once, and two, two Pro Bowls in those six years. Uh, quotable, Hall of Famer Joe Delamar. I don't use the word great for many players, but it applies to Steve. All the guys I know talk about him. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Julius Peppers, defensive end. He played for the Carolina Panthers 2002 to 2009, 2017 to 18 also. But then he played with the Bears from 2010 to 2013 and Green Bay from 2014 to 2016. Uh, let's see why he was elected. Only Jim Marshall and Hall of Famer Bruce Smith played more games at defensive end than Peppers, 266. Though he never led the league in sacks in a season, he finished with at least 10 sacks 10 times in 17 years and had at least 12 sacks three times. He also had 11 career interceptions, forced 52 fumbles, and knocked down 82 passes. At age 38, he finished the 2018 season with five sacks and knocked down six passes. He was a nine-time Pro Bowl selection, a three-time first team, all-pro, and named to all-decade team for the 2000s. Uh, quotable by Peppers. As a kid, I never thought I saw myself as unusual. I always thought that lots of people could do what I did. More and more, I realized I was wrong. Um, so he's two out of three Chicago Bears that made it. 
Devin Hester, Steve McMichael, and uh, Julius Pepper. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Patrick Willis, linebacker from the San Francisco 49ers, 2007 to 2014. Uh, let's see why he is elected. Willis was elite as soon as he set foot in the NFL field. He led the league in tackles his rookie season with 174 on the way to being named the Defensive Rookie of the Year. First team All-Pro and a Pro Bowl selection. He was the first rookie inside linebacker named first team All-Pro since Dick Buckus. He led the league in tackles again in 2009. Had six 100 tackle seasons and 520 tackle seasons in the middle of the 49ers defense. In his eight seasons, he was tied for the league and forced fumbles over that period. Second in passes knocked down and made the most solo tackles. Uh, quotable. I don't think there were many linebackers or will be many linebackers in the history of the game who were or will be as fast as Patrick. But that... Put that with how smart he was, the way he tackled, the way he wanted to improve all the time, the way he did all the hard jobs in our defense with the 49ers. Of course, he's a Hall of Famer. Former 49ers defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. And that is it. So those are your 2024 uh, NFL Hall of Famers who are moving on to Canton. Uh, amazing list of people. All did amazing stuff in their time. And I am happy that the Bears have three and Houston has one. So that's why we will see tonight the Houston Texans playing against the Chicago Bears in the Hall of Fame game. Now let's move on and talk about the Hall of Fame game a little bit. So tonight kicks it off, of course. Uh, tonight is the 2024 Pro Football Hall of Fame game at 8 p.m. Eastern um, on ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. Uh, game kicks off the enshrinement week in Canton, where seven players are being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, so basically, tonight's the big one. No starters uh, for the Chicago Bears are going to play tonight. Well, he said no starters. I don't know what they consider starters. Could we see a Roma Dunze? I would hope. Because he is a new wide receiver. I was really hoping to see Caleb Williams tonight. I think everybody was. But at the same time, the Hall of Fame game is not technically a official preseason game. Um, and let me just make sure I'm right on that before I say that it looked like a fool. Hold on. Let me make sure that I'm right. So I don't have a definitive answer when I looked it up. Obviously, um... I don't believe it counts as, like, a standing like they do with the other preseason games. I don't believe so because that would be a little unfair considering there's only two teams that actually play this weekend. Uh, the rest of the teams play next week and the Bears too. Um, but it says, will Caleb Williams and C.J. Stroud play? No, neither starting quarterback will be taking part in Thursday's game. With Williams out, Tyson Bajit will get a chance to show what he can do. An undrafted rookie last year, Bajan split his four regular season starts while completing nearly 66% of his throws. While it isn't official, it's expected that Davis Mills will start in Stroud's place. Mills has 25 regular season starts under his belt. That included 14 starts during 2022 seasons. Um, any starters are playing. The Bears have already announced that none of their starters will play. The Texans are also not expected to play any of their starters. Uh, so, yeah. Normally, you will never see a starter play in the Hall of Fame game. The Hall of Fame game is a game that honors the Hall of Famers who are getting in, inducted that week. Um, that's why they do it. It used to be five preseason games, four plus the Hall of Fame game. Now it's only three in the Hall of Fame game, which is even better. So the official preseason does not kick off until next week. This is an exhibition game, um, but I don't believe it's going to count on the standings. So I'm not that mad that uh, Caleb's not playing. Now, if next week Caleb and the starters aren't starting in the game Saturday against Buffalo next weekend, then I would be a little like, hey, we need to get them in there. They got to play at least a good quarter to a half a game because I don't want to see that first series crap with three games of preseason. I want to see at least at minimum, I want to see Caleb and the starters in there for at least one quarter of that game. One full quarter, not two series, not three series, 
one full quarter. Let them get their feet wet out there. It's almost like a brand new team. You know, I mean, I think everybody was excited. DJ Moore just signed a four-year extension with the Bears, $110 million. He's going to be locked in as our, um, you know, number one receiver. Uh, Roma Dunze, he's locked in for four, possibly five years. If he gets the uh, team option to stay another year. Same with Caleb Williams, four years with a year for the uh, team. So you're looking at four to five years with them. Um, DJ Moore claims he's in for six years, so I think that's the extension after, I think. I was reading it differently when it first happened, but according to him, it's six years. So I'm guessing that's two years that was left on his contract, plus four more years. Um, and then, you know, you got other guys like Montez Sweat, all of them are locked in for a few seasons. So let's go, let's run with this. Uh, only one that's not locked in past this year right now is Keenan Allen, and I really believe that Keenan Allen is on a prove it to see how Rom how Roma Dunze starts. Because right now, obviously, your number one is DJ Moore, your number two is Keenan Allen, your number three is Roma Dunze, and number four will be Tyler Scott. Um, after this, they want to see how Roma Dunze plays. Because if Roma Dunze has a huge season as a rookie, they possibly don't need Keenan Allen in there. To give him a big payday. They just gave a big payday to DJ Moore. You don't need two big paydays. When you got one big payday. And then you've got a rookie on a rookie deal. That's perfect. So what you do is. You let Keenan Allen go to free agency. Let him go out and test the market. And see what's out there. And then boom. You go out there. And then you um, have Roma Dunze at number two. With Tyler Scott at three. And then you easily get a four and five. You know, they got Velius Jones Jr. and then pick up a free agent wide receiver, maybe a slot receiver, and you're good as gold on that line. Um, offensive line, you can work on that. The defensive line, you could keep working on. We don't know what's going to happen right now at defensive end on the other end of Montez Sweat. So we may have to go after a either rookie defensive end next year or go after one in free agency possibly even a trade for one this year but the point is the Bears have a very good opportunity to win some games this year win a lot of games last year they won seven with less this should be a minimum of 10 11 wins this year minimum I would say minimum I wouldn't go less than 10 I wouldn't go more than maybe 12 but if I'm if I'm a betting man which I am I would go between 10 and 12 wins Depending on how Caleb Williams plays. But from what I've been seeing in training camp stuff that I've seen, he's looking like he's really adjusting. He wanted to play in this game today. He wanted to be in for the Hall of Fame game. But the coach's decision is no starters, and that includes him. So we'll see where they go with that. Um, obviously, that means Keenan Allen won't play, and neither will DJ Moore. I'm guessing Roma Dunze might because I don't know if he's considered a starter or not. Um, he's like a third wide receiver, so he may get the start, but we don't want him to get hurt either yet. I would wait, and I would put him in maybe a little bit and then hold him off. Um, but like I said, DJ Moore locked in to a four-year deal, $110 million extension with the Bears, uh, $27 million a year. And DJ Moore showed last year that he deserved it. Because Justin Fields, that was his guy. And he proved it with 1,300 yards. So that was an amazing year for him. Um, so we'll see what happens this weekend. A uh, lot to talk about next week. We'll have all the, I'll have a rundown of the preseason games. I'm starting my predictions during the preseason this year. So let's get it started now. Who do I predict to win tonight? Chicago Bears are going to win 28-21 to over the Houston Texans. Um... Bears Hard Knock starts Tuesday, August 6th on HBO Max, so make sure you check that out. It's going to be amazing. I saw the previews. I can't wait to see the behind the scenes of the Chicago Bears, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, so yeah, that's it for football this week with that, uh, but let's go into what we've been doing really quick. Uh, let's talk wide receivers for fantasy football. So here we go. Here are the top receivers for fantasy this year. Of course, if you are a fantasy football player, 
these are the players that you should be uh, writing down. Uh, tier 1, C.D. Lamb, number 1, of course, uh, with a bye week of 7. He was one of my receivers last year, and I won at least 2 or 3 games because of C.D. Lamb. So he was definitely my go-to. Uh, Tyree Kill of Miami, bye week of 6. Uh, Jamar Chase from Cincinnati, 12 uh, for the bye week. Justin Jefferson from Minnesota at number six or uh, number four with a bye week of six. Uh, I'm not saying Brown from Detroit with a bye week of five coming in at number five. Uh, tier two, AJ Brown from Philadelphia at five. Uh, bye week five. Let's see Wilson out of New Jersey, uh, New York Jets. I always say New Jersey Jets. Um, number seven with a bye week of twelve. Number eight, Paul Nakara. From the LA Rams, or P. Nakara, but I'm guessing Paul. Could be Peter. I don't know every single wide receiver, and I don't think any of you do too. So um, let's keep going with this. Uh, let's see. Samuel Sr. from San Francisco. Debo Samuel, he's at number nine, and he's got a bye week of nine. Mike Evans from Tampa Bay, week 11 bye week, coming in at number 10. Tier 3. Brandon Ayuk uh, from San Francisco coming at number 11 with a bye week of 9. Number 12, Marvin Harrison Jr. from Arizona coming in number 11. Or number 12, that's amazing, with a bye week of 11. Uh, Olave from New Orleans, number uh, bye week number 12 coming in 13 on that one. I'm not going to read the bye week, you guys can see that. Uh, number 14, Collins of Houston. Number 15 is London from Atlanta. Uh, Devontae Davis from Las Vegas coming in at 16. DK Metcalf from Seattle coming in at 17. Uh, Waddle from Miami coming in at number 18. And DJ Moore coming in at number 19 on Tier 3. Uh, tier 4. I'll be honest though. Some of these Tier 3 guys, I wouldn't mind taking number 1. Because like guys like DJ Moore, he's going to have an amazing season. He had an amazing season last year. Marvin Harrison Jr. being a big rookie, he might, so we'll see. Uh, tier 4, Amari Cooper from Cleveland, uh, number 20. Uh, Smith from Philly coming in at number 21. Cooper Cup from the LA Rams at number 22. Pinkins from Pittsburgh coming in 23. Uh, Higgins from Cincinnati coming in 24. Michael Pittman Jr. coming in at number 25. Malik Neighbors of the New York Giants coming in at 26. What a slap in the face to Roma Dunze. He's not even in Tier 4 yet? Come on. He's going to be just as good as Neighbors. Um, let's see. We got Dell from Houston coming in at number 27. Stefan Diggs from Houston coming in at 28. And Flowers from Baltimore coming in at 29. Um, in Tier 5, they got Calvin Ridley in there. Uh, Keenan Allen, which I think is another slap in the face right there. I think he could have a really good season. Tier 6, Tyler Lockett. I don't even see Roma Dunze in here. I'm looking. Where is Roma? There he is. Number 44, I think. But, look, I would rather some of these Bears come in lower because of the fact that when they have a great season, people are going to look and say, oh, my Lord. Now, do I think that Roma Dunze is going to get 1,000 yards? Probably not. Not this year because you've got... DJ Moore, and you have, um, we have Allen, too. So, I mean, come on. Those are your 2,000-yard receivers. But I do believe with the connection that Caleb Williams has with Roma Dunze and the fact that Keenan Allen could end up getting injured, you know, he's 32 years old. I'm not saying that's old, but in football years, that's past your prime usually. So, honestly, yeah, I could definitely see, um, you know, Roma Dunze maybe hitting 700 yards, 800 yards on the season in his rookie year, which wouldn't be bad as a third uh, string receiver. So, we'll see what happens. So, there you go. Those are your people. There's more, but obviously, the longer you get into this list, these are guys who you're going to pick at the way end because there's nobody left. So, <coughs> yeah, let's just uh, move on from that. So, wide receiver rank, you know, definitely check out those receivers for your fantasy team this year. Now, 
Uh, let's move on. WWE SummerSlam. That's right. WWE SummerSlam is this weekend um, from Cleveland, Ohio. Very big game. Man, Ohio's got some good stuff this weekend. The Hall of Fame in Canton. And then Cleveland has, of course, uh, WWE SummerSlam. Let's check that. All right, so WWE SummerSlam, of course, everybody knows, is this Saturday, August 3rd, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time, live on Peacock, and it's coming, of course, from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and that's going to be a big one. So here's the match card for this WWE big premium live event. Of course, we got CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, um, Seth Rollins is of course the special guest referee for that one that is gonna be really crazy uh we got Sami Zayn and Braun Breaker for the WWE Intercontinental Championship I'm taking Drew McIntyre in that first match that I called out um I believe that Seth Rollins is going to either screw over CM Punk or he's gonna screw over both by knocking them both out so it's either gonna come to a draw or Drew McIntyre but I'm going with McIntyre in that one I think that that one is going to definitely be a barn burner. It's going to be great. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker. I would, what I'd like to see and what I think is going to happen is Braun Breaker win his first title. I think he beats Sami Zayn and wins the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan for the WWE Women's World Heavyweight Championship. I think Liv walks out the champion. I think Dominic Mysterio turns on Mommy. It's going to happen. I see it now. Uh, Bailey versus Nia Jax for the women's championship. I see Bailey winning, and I see a possible cash in for Tiffany Stratton that's going to turn into a match eventually with Nia Jax. I think Nia Jax is going to help beat down uh, Bailey after the match is over, and then Tiffany Stratton's going to come out and cash in her money in the bank. Uh, Logan Paul versus LA Knight for, yeah, for the United States Championship. I think this is LA Knight's moment. I think he's going to get his first title in the WWE on the main roster. LA Knight over Logan Paul. Uh, let's see. Damian Priest versus Gunther for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I think we are definitely seeing that title change hands. I think Gunther is going to be the next World Heavyweight Champion, and I think he beats Damian Priest. Uh, and then finally, Cody Rhodes and Solo Sequoia for the WWE Undisputed Championship. It's going to be a hell of a match. I think we're going to see some interference. I think that um, Roman and the Usos return, helping Cody win, and The Rock comes back also. The Rock is officially done filming his movie as of a few days ago, which means he has the rest of the, I believe, the rest of the year open. Before he films again. I think I heard he doesn't film again until like 2025. So if that's the case. And he doesn't have any major movies coming up. Then he'll come back. Um, I think we're going to see a Bloodline Civil War. At uh, Survivor Series War Games. And The Rock is going to lead Solo and the other guys in there. Uh, against Roman and his guys. So it's going to be the original Bloodline. Versus the new Bloodline. And so I think that's going to be great. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, those are my predictions. I think Cody Rhodes wins. Gunther. Uh, Drew McIntyre. I've got LA Knight winning. I've got Bailey winning, but a cash in from Tiffany Stratton. Um, I've got Rhea Ripley losing to Liv Morgan. And then Sami Zayn is going to lose the Intercontinental title to Braun Breaker. So we'll see what happens next week. Uh, Big Raw. I, there could be a possible another match or two scheduled um as of smackdown tomorrow night who knows they may throw a couple in there um also jelly roll is performing uh he's got two songs on the card but he's also going to perform there um tomorrow night so or on saturday night so it's going to be great uh we got one two three four five six seven matches not too shabby um and then who knows like i said they could end up adding a tag team match i didn't see i see no tag team matches on this card yet so there could be a match or two. They did not pull the trigger on Uncle Howdy and Chad Gable, which I was a little shocked by. I don't see that. It's not added on the card yet. And this was updated two hours ago. So we would have known. But who knows? Maybe something will happen by 
um, Saturday. Uh, so we'll see. But yeah, so that's the WWE Survivor Series or SummerSlam. Sorry, that's in November. We still got a couple of months till then. Uh, the Olympics medal count. Let's check it out. Let's see how many medals all of these places have. So the top five right now. China has 11. Oh, Canada just won the bronze. <laughs> it just popped up on my screen. Uh, China uh, has 11 gold, 7 silver, and 3 bronze for a total of 22. But they lead the medal count in gold. Uh, France has 8 gold, 11 um, silver, and 8 bronze for 27. Uh, right now, they are actually second place in the medal count, the full medal count. Uh, Japan has eight gold, three silver, and then four um, bronze medals for a total of 15. Australia has seven gold medals, six silver, four bronze for 17 total. The United States coming in at number five with six gold, 13 silver, and 12 bronze for 31 total so right now uh, the USA actually leads the full medal count if you add all the medals together we lead the full medal count but in these they go based on the gold being number one um, so they go based on that um, Great Britain has six gold seven silver seven bronze for 20 uh, South Korea coming at number seven uh, with six gold three silver three bronze for 12 um, Italy comes in, comes in at number eight with five gold, six silver, and four bronze for 15 total. Canada's coming in at number nine, two gold, two silver, and three bronze for seven. And number 10 is Germany uh, with two gold, two silver, and two bronze medals uh, for six total. So there's your top 10 in the medal count. Um, some ones that are also on here. Uh, Ireland has three total medals, um, Hong Kong has four total medals, and Romania has four medals, um, also going in to the second week, I believe, of what will be the second week coming up of the Olympics, so pretty decent, um, pretty decent Olympics so far, let's see Simone Biles, I know won a couple of gold already, uh, USA men's basketball team is doing good, uh, let's see, where is the women's team? Uh, let's see, women's basketball Olympics. Let's see where they're at. Uh, they actually play today. Well, by the time you hear this, it'll be over. They play today at 2 p.m. against Belgium. Uh, but I'm trying to see where they are in the standings. Because I want to see where they're at. Let's see, hold on, standings. Okay, so here we go. In Group A, Serbia is 2-0. and Spain is 2-0. and Puerto Rico is 0-2. China is 0-2. In Group B, France is 2-0. and Nigeria is 1-1. and Australia is 1-1. and Canada is 0-2. And, and then in Group C, Germany is 2-0. and uh, United States is 1-0. and They've only played one game. They're playing their second game today. Japan is 2-0, and and Belgium is 1-0, and, and that's for um, the women. For the men, the United States, of course, the men are 2-0. and They won their first two games. Um, they should be playing soon. I believe maybe tomorrow. I might actually get to watch that game. Uh, let's see. So the thing is, when you watch the Olympics in the United States, a lot of the games are early in the day, like early in the day, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, um, 8 o'clock in the morning. So, I mean, unless you're like a stay at home person who doesn't work, it's obviously easy to watch it then. But I work overnights at my at my full time job. So it's like I'm overnight. So I'm sleeping during the daytime. So I don't get to see it. All right. Uh, oh, breaking news. Ooh, I just saw this. Uh, Pete Davidson checks into facility for mental health. Oh, that stinks because I love him. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, all right, so let's move on now to our entertainment section. Um, sports is done, of course. The Olympics, we'll talk next week about that. We'll have the 
final match results for SummerSlam. And then, of course, we'll talk NFL preseason official week one. But let's go into our entertainment section. All right, so as everybody knows, when we get to a new month, what do we talk about? We talk about what's coming to streaming services in that month. So let's go through a list of things. I'm only going to go the big ones. Um, so starting today on Netflix, we'll start with Netflix. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series premiere. Uh, it's a Netflix original. From Me to You, Kimi Ni Toguta season three premiere. Love is Blind Mexico series premiere. Um, that's going to be on Unstable Season 2 premiere on Netflix Original, Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, uh, let's see, Fire Country Season 1, Pawn Star Season 15, Movies, Borderless Fog movie premiere, a Netflix Original, Bride of Chucky, Dr. Seuss the Cat in the Hat, Child's Play 2, 3, Cult of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, uh, Fury, Godzilla Minus 1, Minus Color, Jack Reacher, Jack Reacher Never Go Back, Dr. Seuss the Lorax, Monster House, Mr. Deeds, The Next Karate Kid, Not Another Teen Movie, Red, Red 2, Room, Save the Last Dance, See to Chucky, The Spectacular Now, Tarot, White Chicks, and World War Z all premiere today. Uh, tomorrow, nothing that great. There are a few things, but nothing good. Uh, Saturday, Joe Rogan, Burn the Boats live comedy special, a Netflix original. It's going to be live. Uh, Netflix is starting to dabble in the live. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wednesday, August 7th, Love is Blind, UK series premiere. Uh, the Emoji Movie for all the kids out there is coming Thursday, August 8th. Let's see, Sunday, August 9th, or Sunday, August 11th, Night School, it's a movie. Uh, let's see, August 13th is Matt Reif, Lucid, a crowd work special, comedy special. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Saturday, August 17th, it's called Love Next Door, a series premiere, a Netflix original. Migration is coming on Monday, August 19th for all the kids out there. Uh, let's see. I don't see anything else that seems that great. So, I mean, you can find these lists anywhere of everything. Uh, let's see. Apple TV Plus. Series premiere Friday, August 9th of Yo Gabba Gabba or Yo Gabba Gabba Land. Uh, it's an Apple original. The Instigators movie premiere. Uh, Bad Monkey series premiere August 14th. All right, coming to Disney Plus Friday, August 2nd, Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures. It's a short uh, season two premiere, Disney Plus original. Uh, Wednesday, August 7th, Grownish season six. Thursday, August 8th, Are You Sure series premiere, a Disney Plus original. Uh, Wednesday, August 14th, Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures Season 2 premiere. Uh, let's see, on Hulu. Uh, here's what's coming to Hulu. Uh, let's see, Buddy Velastro's Cake Dynasty Season 1, Interrogation Cam Season 1, and then we got Eddie Murphy Raw, and then the movies The Banger Sisters, The Beach, Because I Said So, The Brothers McCullen, Casino, Drug, uh, Drumline, uh, Flubber, Fool's Gold, The Full Monty, Garfield the Movie, Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties, uh, The Guardian, Horrible Bosses 1 and 2, I Feel Pretty, In Time, John Carter, Kingdom of Heaven, Knocked Up, Made in Manhattan, Barley and Me, One and the Puppy Years, uh, The Mask of Zorro, Muppets from Space, Night at the Museum, um, Night at the Museum Battle of the Smithsonian and Night at the Museum Secret of the Tomb. Uh, let's see. Punch Drunk Love, Race to, uh, Race to Rich, uh, Witch Mountain, Raising Arizona, Robots, Son-in-Law, Tron Legacy, and Welcome Home are all coming there. Uh, Friday, August 2nd, the Comedy Central Roast of James Franco and the Comedy Central Roast of Justin Bieber. Uh, also, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes streaming premiere. That was just in the movie theater, too, so that's pretty decent. Uh, let's see. 
and Practical Joker Season 8, Monday, August 5th. Dance Moms, a new era series premiere on Hulu. I'm just looking through to see if there's anything really good to talk about or to bring up. Like I said, you can find these lists anywhere. So definitely go look. I'm just naming the big ones. Okay, Muslim Matchmaker series premiere Tuesday, August 20th. It's a Hulu original. Definitely check that out. Uh, let's see. Anything else good? Bunch of comedy specials. Jersey Shore Family Vacation Season 3 and 4 are coming to Hulu. Um, and then... Okay, so that's it. And, and now HBO Max. Thursday, August 1st, which is today. Breaking New Ground Season 1 finale. Uh, the Convict Season 2 to 4. Uh, House Hunters Volume 9, House Hunters International, and here's movies, Three Days to Kill, Amelie, Arthur, Beetlejuice, the Beetlejuice 2 preview looks amazing. Uh, go check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, the Bigger Splash, Black Thorn, Brick Mansions, Forever My Girl, The Good Doctor, Grown Ups 1 and 2, Hercules, How to Train Your Dragon, No Place on Earth. Pretty Woman, Rio, Sherlock Holmes from 2009, Something's Gotta Give, Taken, The Two Faces of January, Two Lovers, and Where the Wild Things Are. Uh, Saturday, August 3rd, Elizabeth Taylor, The Long Lost Tapes Documentary. Uh, let's see, Tuesday, August 6th, Hard Knocks Training Camp with The Bears, docuseries premiere. Uh, let's see... If you haven't watched New York Giants one yet, it's amazing. Definitely go check that out. It's really good. Uh, let's see. Friday, August 9th, Caught Season 2. Don't know what that is, but it sounds good. Obviously, they're catching some shit. Uh, let's see. I'm looking to see if there's anything else that's that good. Late Night Lockup Season 2. Yeah, I love those shows. Remember back in the day, the show Lock Up? That was an awesome show. And they do show it once in a while on cable, but it's rare. Uh, Paramount Plus, let's see. Today, Criminal Minds, Evolution, Season 2 Finale. Uh, let's see. Movies, Alien Flux, Airplane, Airplane 2, Almost Famous, The Aviator, Bad News Bears from 2005, Barbarella, uh, Black Sunday, Breakdown, Brooklyn's Finest, Career Opportunities, that was a good movie, uh, City of God, The Color of Money, Coming to America, The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover, that's a long-ass movie title, uh, Cujo, Copland, Double Jeopardy, that's a good movie with, um, uh, what's her name, uh, Ashley Judd, it's a really good movie. If you've never seen that one, it's with her and Tommy Lee Jones. Awesome movie about a woman who her husband um, dies and she gets accused of murdering him, goes to jail. She gets out after a certain amount of time and finds out he's really still alive and he faked his death. So because she can't be accused of the same crime twice, she goes after him. That's amazing. Um, election. Aaron Brockovich. Face Off. I heard there's a sequel of that coming out with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta, I believe it is. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. Good movie. Uh, Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, and Garfield the Movie. Uh, let's see. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. The Lincoln Lawyer. Miss Congeniality. Uh, Naked Gun from 1956. I didn't even know they made a Naked Gun back then. Um, The Net, uh, Paid in Full, Paper Moon, The Perfect Storm, Pulp Fiction, Sabrina, Save the Last Dance, School Days, Shaft from uh, 2000 and Shaft from 2019, Sleeping with the Enemy, Strip Tease, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1, 2, and 3, The Time Machine, A Time to Kill, love that movie, awesome movie, Matthew McConaughey and Samuel Jackson, great in that movie, Tombstone, Tommy Boy, Training Day, Another Denzel amazing movie, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Unforgettable, The Untouchables, The War of the Worlds from 1953, We Bought a Zoo, and When Worlds Collide. 
Sunday, August 4th, Mayor of Kingstown, Season 3 Finale. Um, Monday, August 5th, American in Insurrection. Uh, Tuesday, August 6th, PD, True Docuseries Premiere. Uh, let's see. Friday, August 9th, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Series Premiere. That sounds good. I'll have to check that one out. Um, let's see. That's it. I don't know. This one sounds kind of cool. Extreme Airport Africa Season 1. Don't know what it's about, but it sounds pretty good. And uh, we got Peacock. Uh, as of today, movies, 51st Dates, American Girl, The Backup Plan, Battleship, B-Movie, Beethoven 1 and 2, The Best Man, The Best Man Holiday, Blair Witch 1 and 2, uh, Blue Valentine, The Book of Eli, uh, Book of Shadows, The Blair Witch, the Boss, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Bulletproof, Casino, Clueless, Couples Retreat, Do the Right Thing, Doom, Fast 9, The Fast Saga, uh, let's see, The Fighter, The Great Outdoors, um, The Hulk, Hustle and Flow, Johnson Family Vacation, Just Go With It, I love that movie, uh, Kindergarten Cop, King Richard, Knocked Up, Little Fockers, Love at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Don't know what that is. Uh, Medea's Big Happy Family. Medea's Witness Protection. Uh, Major Pain. Mean Girls. Meet the Fockers. Meet the Parents. Moneyball. It should have just put all the Meet the Parents movies. Uh, My Best Friend's Girl. The Other Guys. R.I.P.D. Puss in Boots. Ride Along. Uh, Shazam. Shrek. Space Jam. Think Like a Man 1 and 2, This is 40, uh, let's see, The Wedding Veil, um, and then, these are all Wedding Veils, The Wedding Veil, and then Expectations, Inspiration, Journey, Legacy, and Unveiled, don't know what it is, if you know, check it out, uh, let's see, anything else good on Peacock this week, Olympic Highlights with Kevin Hart and Keenan Thompson Finale, That'll be next Sunday, August 11th. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. All right, what else do we got on here? Abused by Mom, The Ruby Scandal. All the Fast and the Furious movies are premiering Monday, August 12th. The Real Housewives of New Jersey season 14 finale. Um... And then here's what we got for the Fast and the Furious. So I don't think it's all of them. Too Fast, Too Furious, Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious 6, The Fast and the Furious, The Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, Fast 5, The Fate of the Furious, and Furious 7. Furious 10's not on there yet. Oh, Thursday, August 15th, if you're a fan of Bel Air, Season 3 premieres. I love that show, so we'll be watching that. Um, let's see. What else? Eh, nothing that great. Days of Our Lives, Season 60 premiere. Jeez, Season 60, that's crazy. And if you're into it, the Paris 2024 Paralympic Games opening ceremony will be on Wednesday, August 28th. Uh, also, The Fall Guy, the new movie, The Fall Guy, that obviously didn't do that great in the theaters, is already coming to streaming. Um, and then Amazon Prime, I'm not a big fan of. If you want to see what's there... And there's a lot of movies premiering as of today. Nothing that great. So that is it. That is all your streaming services and the big stuff that's coming to it. So make sure you check that out. Um, for sure, that's that's awesome. All right, so a couple of last things to talk about really quick before we go. <clears throat> Lollapalooza is this weekend. It's starting today. And I've got the full list of what you can see if you're going to Lala. Uh, if you're on your way, if you'll already be there, obviously, though, as of now. Uh, so let's check it out really quick and let people know what's going to be there all weekend. You can also stream it on Hulu. So if you can't make it to Lala or if you're in another state now, you can check it out on Hulu. Hulu's going to be streaming the entire event live. Um, not every band is on there, though. You'll have to check. It'll tell you the schedule. There's two different cameras on two different stages. Uh, so you'll be able to see a lot of the bands, but not all of them. Um, but let's go over 
uh, what is at Lollapalooza this weekend, and see. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go into this. So for Thursday, gates are officially open, of course, as of when I'm recording this. Um, let's go over the lineup really quick. Let's see if I can find the actual lineup per day. Because sometimes you can't. All right, so since I've already announced the Lollapalooza lineup way back when it came out and the schedule for it, let's go over the Hulu instead because it's easier to find that than it is to find anything else. Okay, so uh, let's select the time zone that we're in so that it's easier for times. I'm doing Chicago time. So if you're West Coast, you're two hours behind. If you're East Coast, you're an hour ahead of us. Uh, so here we go. So today, Thursday, on Channel 1 on Hulu. Uh, Matt Hansen at 4.05. Chappelle Rowan at 5 p.m. Uh, Walker Royce at 6. Kesha at 7.05 p.m. Uh, Benson Boone at 8.05. Fisher at 9.10. And the headliner is Megan Thee Stallion at 10.30 p.m. Uh, channel 2 uh, for tonight is Met at 4.05. Sam Barber at 5 o'clock. Big X the pole, uh, the plug at 6:10. Lizzie Mc McAlpine at 7:15. Labyrinth at 8:20, and Hosier is the headliner at 9:30 tonight. Uh, so that's day one. Tomorrow, you can watch on Hulu uh, at four o'clock. Daniel Seavey, Sexy Red at 4:45. Aluk at 5:50. Renee Rapp. At 6.45, Lofi with the Chicago Philharmonic at 7.50, uh, Galantis at 8.55, and the Stray Kids are the headliner at 10 p.m. On Channel 2, tomorrow at 4 o'clock is Zandra, 4.45 is Paw Paw Rod, It's Murph is at 5.30, Nozoy is at 6.20, Rule is at 7.25, Zed at 8.30, Victoria Monet at 9.50, and Kevin Abstract at 10.35 p.m. That's Channel 2. Uh, Saturday, Channel 1, we'll have, they'll have Destroy Boys at 4.05, Leisure at 4.35, uh, TV Girl at 5.40, The Deftones at 6.45, Tate McRae at 7.45, and The Killers at 8.45, and they're the headliners. Um... On Channel 2, you got Briston Maroney at 4.05, Ivy at 5, Nia Archives at 5.50, Ethel Kane at 6.35. The headliner at 8.45 is Future X Metro Bullman, and then Hippocampus at 10 o'clock. And then Sunday, to close out the entire thing, uh, Channel 2 is Knox at 4.05, Slope Pulp at 4.40, Mini Web at 5:40, Pierce the Veil at 6:45, Black Tiger Sex Machine at 7:55, Two Door Cinema Club at 9 p.m. and the headliner is Melanie Martinez at 10 p.m. On Channel One, Water Parks at 4:05, Teddy Swims at 5:45, Conan Gray at 6:45, Sir at 7:55, Zed Dead at 9 p.m. and the big headliner of the weekend for Lollapalooza. Blink 182 at 10 p.m. on Sunday night. That is going to be awesome. What a show it's going to be. Uh, make sure you check it out. If you're at Lala this weekend, have an amazing, amazing time. I hope everybody has a good time. I could go over the full list, but if you're at Lala, you already know. If you know, you know. I would rather do this for the people who are going to watch it on Hulu because they can't be at the show uh, like me. I wish I was there, um, but I got other stuff to do. Uh, so let's go over the big top box office movies for last week and see where exactly Deadpool and Wolverine came in. I'm pretty sure we already know. Okay, so number 10 last week was Rayan. Uh, did a weekend gross of 453000 uh, and a total gross of the same in the first week it was released. Number nine, Fly Me to the Moon, did a weekend gross of 768000 19 million total gross. Uh, weeks release, three. 
Uh, the Fabulous Four, weekend gross of $1 million, total gross of $1.6 million in one week. Uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die, which I watched last week. Amazing movie. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. I'm not going to give away spoilers to the movie, but it was amazing. Uh, let's see, a weekend gross of $1.3 million, total gross of $192 million in eight weeks out. Uh, Quiet Place came in at number six, 3.1 million, total gross of 135 million in five weeks. Uh, Long Legs did a weekend gross last weekend of 6.8 million, total gross of 61 million in three weeks out. Number four, still going strong, Inside Out 2 did a weekend gross of 8.6 million dollars, total gross of 617 million in seven weeks. Number three again was Despicable Me 4. Did a weekend gross of 15 million, total gross of 298 million in four weeks out. Uh, let's see. Twisters came in at number two with a weekend gross of 35 million. Not too shabby. Weeks out, two weeks, and it did a total gross of 165 million. But the big winner, and I'm telling you now, it's going to eclipse this weekend because I know people have already seen it twice. It is going to eclipse Despicable Me 4, which in four weeks did $298 million. Deadpool and Wolverine, number one, weekend gross of $211 million, but a total gross of $261 million. It's already did over $500 million worldwide. But Despicable Me 4 in four weeks has done $298 million. Deadpool and Wolverine's already done 261 in one week. That is amazing. Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, amazing. Next week we'll find out where Deadpool and Wolverine came in this weekend with all these other movies, um, and plus any new movies that are coming out this weekend. Um, I'm going to take off. I hope everybody has an amazing weekend. It's been an amazing show. Uh, make sure you check out Lollapalooza this weekend on Hulu. If you can't go, go see Deadpool and Wolverine if you haven't seen it already. I heard it's really good. Um, Dean Richards from Chicago gave it a D. The fact that it's done so well at the theaters two weeks in a row shows that he's just a hack that doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, anybody could be a movie critic. That's a sad thing. I wish I could get paid that much money to be wrong about movies all the time. I mean, it is a value of opinion, but the point is, dude. Maybe it's you that has the problem with these movies because all these movies do big weeks and weeks and weeks in a row. Uh, but I'm going to take off. I will see everybody next week. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Check out SummerSlam this weekend, the Olympics, uh, Lollapalooza on Hulu. Go check out Deadpool and Wolverine. Make it a big weekend. Go to some fests. If you're in the Romeoville area, there's a fest um, from tonight all the way till Sunday. Uh, Seventh Heavens headlining it Sunday night to end it. Make sure you check it out. I'll see everybody later. This is the end of our broadcast day. I love you all. Peace.